I raise meat rabbits almost entirely on what I grow in my backyard. Here's how I do it. Instead of traditional rabbit pellets, I use my back lawn as my primary food source for them. Early this spring, I planted white clover in my grass lawn to provide both grass and clover for my rabbits. The high protein of the clover helps the rabbits grow quickly. To harvest the clover, I got this antique scythe, which I restored and sharpened. It's an efficient tool, and I only need to take a couple swings of the scythe to harvest all the clover I need each day. And I can cut a little bit every day of the growing season. I also dry some of the clover to save as hay for the winter. Now to make sure they have a balanced diet, I planted a bunch of different plants including comfrey, willow bushes, sunchokes, and daikon radishes. Comfrey is a super nutritious perennial plant with huge leaves that are rich in protein. It grows deep roots that can get to minerals other plants can't get to, and it puts those in the leaves, so it's a staple in my rabbit's diet. It's so prolific that I can pull up a root and cut it into a bunch of pieces and plant it all over my yard. Every piece will grow a new plant. So once you have a couple plants, you can harvest the roots from those and grow as much as you want. And it grows so quickly, I can pull leaves from each plant every day, and they've grown back within the week. It's also a great soil builder. It adds organic matter to the heavy clay soil in my yard, so I've planted it around my fruit trees as well to enrich the soil there. Willow can be propagated from cuttings in winter, spring, and summer. All the willows in my yard come from cuttings that I took from the wild. Willow is really fast growing, and its leaves have a good amount of protein, and the leaves and the bark are rich in tannins, which really help with parasite control in the rabbits. Sunchokes are a sunflower that produce tubers that are like potatoes. I grow lots of sunchokes for myself, but the rabbits also love the branches that they create. Sunchokes can be grown as a perennial just by leaving a couple tubers in the soil when you harvest them. If you do that, a whole new patch of sunchokes will come up in the spring. The leaves and stems are a great source of fiber and carbohydrates for the rabbits. They produce these really tall flowers that are one of the last flowers of autumn. So by growing these, you're providing a lot of late season food for the pollinators too. I feed the tubers to the rabbits in the winter when leafy greens aren't available. Now in my vegetable garden, I saved a small spot to grow radishes. These are daikon radishes. They grow a really large taproot and lots of leafy greens, and they're very fast growing. Their leaves are very rich in nutrients and are probably the most preferred food out of everything I grow for my rabbits. Now these are just the main things I grow, but you can experiment quite a bit with this. Other great rabbit crops are squash and pumpkins, sweet potato vines, sunflowers, dandelions. It's even popular to grow alfalfa for them. Most of the weeds that grow in your yard are going to be great rabbit foods too. The principle here that I follow is I don't feed them too many really sweet sugary foods like fruits. Now you can give them some, just not too much. And the staple of their diet is dark leafy greens that are high in protein like comfrey and clover. That ensures you get decent growth rates out of the rabbits, and be sure to offer as much variety as possible so they're getting all the nutrients they need. I give my rabbits at least five different species of plants every day, and I can harvest from all of those and dry it for winter use too, when I have an abundance in the summer. I also provide a natural salt lick for them, just to make sure they're getting enough sodium and other trace minerals. Now a couple foods to avoid are garlic and onions. These plants are slightly toxic to rabbits. Now if you raise rabbits on pellet and want to feed them like I do, it's really important to transition them slowly. Provide just a handful of greens for each rabbit the first day, and gradually start providing more and more each day while limiting the amount of pellets they have until you can switch them over entirely. Too much greens all at once for a pellet raised rabbit can cause bloating, which can be deadly. By growing rabbits this way, I'm creating one of the most sustainable, small scale homestead operations. You can do this pretty much anywhere, I just have a small backyard. And you can make this system even better by collecting all the manure from the rabbits and using that to help grow your crops for them. So if you want to raise sustainable meat in a closed loop system entirely in your own backyard without any other inputs, try raising rabbits. Let me know in the comments if you do something similar to this, and thanks for watching.